What's your favorite thing about mom? I love her eggs. Does she make you eggs in the morning? I think my favorite thing about my mom is the fact that no matter how much me, my brother, my sister, or anybody like messes up or does something bad, she still loves us and still takes care of us and still helps us. She buys me stuff. She's funny. She's funny. My favorite thing about my mom is that she's a very good listener. She's always willing to listen and talk things out. What do you like to do with your mom? Go shopping sometimes. I like to do everything with my mom. Um, yeah, basically everything. Sit with her. Cook. Um, I like to shop, talk, cook sometimes, hang out. How old do you think mom is? 45. 45? 45. I don't know. And we would tell her that she looks like she's 25. 25. Right, right, okay. Why are you thankful for mom? I'm thankful for my mom because she's the one who made me who, she's one of two people who made me who I am today. And she's just taught me how to be strong and kind and compassionate person with her example. Uh, because she does a lot of stuff around the house for us. Because she cares for us. Good. <laughs> Why are you thankful for your mom? Because, kind of like the, um, the first question you asked me, because no matter how much we mess up, she still loves us, you know, she still takes care of us, and yeah. What do you want to tell mama? What'd you say? I love you, my sweet Odini. Yeah. What? I would tell her I love you, and I would tell her that she's beautiful, and I love her, and I Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning. Welcome to Firmly Rooted. Welcome to the house of the Lord. My house, your house, all the houses where we're worshiping this morning. Happy Mother's Day. Um, whether you have really great feelings about that day or not so good, I'd like you to think about the people that poured into you as you were growing up, male or female. Um, and I know that you know, a lot of the females have poured into others uh, as they've been adults and the people that you've poured into. Um, celebrate those things today, you know, whether it's a big whoop de doo celebration and everybody's uh, going to FaceTime or just kind of a quiet celebration. Just think about the people that nurtured you and, and reflect on those that you've nurtured today um, and celebrate that way. Um, I know that there's great things in store for you in the message today, whether it's the spoken word or the sung word. Um, so again, I just invite you to lean in. Um, I invite you to lean in with the confidence that there's a word just for you, that God has intended just for you this morning. So enjoy your worship. Let's get started. Seven, eight. <laughs>
service, how about if we uh, bow our heads and uh, pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, you are indeed good, gracious. Your providence, your protection, your faithfulness to all of your promises. You're good. You've never betrayed us. You have never lied to us. There's not even a single promise that you've made that you've never failed to fulfill. And Father, the most amazing promise was the sending of your Son. Hundreds of Messianic prophecies, a hundred of them or more, talking about this Messiah that's going to come and save the world. And Jesus, thank you. Thank you for leaving a throne and, and, and leaving your divine nature aside and facing this world the way we face this world and seeing its ugliness and seeing its hardship and seeing its hurt. For weeping like we weep and getting hungry like we get hungry and get weary because we get weary. But in all of those things, Lord Jesus, thank you for speaking truth into them. Thank you for bringing life into them. Thank you for showing us that, 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 that what our eyes see in the kingdom of this world isn't real. That, that there is a reality beyond it that is really real. And that's what you've, you've called us to believe in. That, that the, the kingdom of God is at hand. And that you're making all things new. And during this sermon series where we talk about the Holy Spirit, in the last week of, of your life, Lord Jesus, you talked about the Holy Spirit so much that we're going to have to rely on the Holy Spirit just like the disciples relied on you. That, that we're going to have to know the Holy Spirit the way that the disciples knew you. And that, and that we're going to have to rely on what He says and what, because He's going to lead us into all truths. He's going to remind us of the things that you have said. He's going to be a comforter and a counselor to, her, to us. And so, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thank you. And Holy Spirit, please pour yourself now into this. And fulfill once again the promise that we're two or three gather in your name. You're in the midst of us. And even though we're gathering in this virtual way, that you're powerfully not only working in the Donnelly house right now, but you're powerfully moving in every home that is seeing this now or might see it in the near future. Prepare our hearts and our minds to worship you and be ready to receive from you that which you have for us. All right, everyone, it's time for our offering. And I got to tell you, this pastor gets uncomfortable every time we talk about money because I don't know where your hearts are. And so I just want you to know that normally at this time in our worship service, we would take an offering. 
The idea is that God has blessed us with every physical blessing that we have, and what we have committed to do is return a portion back to Him so it might be used for His kingdom, so that it might be used to spread the gospel. And so I want you to know that this commitment is for you firmly rooted folk. You are the ones committed to this ministry. You're the ones that because of your support, we can do what we're doing right now. And so we ask that during, especially during this time right now, that you look at the screen and you see that there are some different ways that you might be able to give electronically or even by mail. Electronically, you can make that a regular gift that comes weekly or monthly, however you wanna do it. But here's your time. It's you giving back to Him and to His kingdom. This is not an obligation for the rest of you. I don't want anybody to feel obligated or feel like I'm telling you, you better give me money. No, no, and no, and no. But if you feel moved inside to give a free will offering, then do it freely. Don't do it under compulsion. Don't do it because that pastor said so. Do it because Jesus is telling you to give. Paul talks about not letting your left hand know what your right hand's doing. It's kind of like that quick, that kind of natural. So with that, we're now going to take our offering. May God use the gifts to bring the message of Jesus to those who do not know him and to strengthen the face of those who do. In Jesus' name. Today's reading is from John 16, verses 5 through 15. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because people do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you to all the truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you.
It's uh, time for our message, and I have to admit that I'm not shy of jealousy and competition, but for weeks now I've watched my wife do announcements out in the sunshine in her little orange chair. I've seen her uh, sit by the fireplace, and what do I do? I stand behind this cold, hard um, pulpit and preach, so I just thought, hey, Aaron is like the world's greatest editor ever, so we can do this. feels better. How about if we uh, turn to our Lord in prayer? Grace Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with us and bless us. And that, Father, you would bless the, the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts, and they be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's turn to the Word of God. We are in our uh, second sermon in a series of sermons on the Holy Spirit. And I want to read to you from John chapter 16. But I tell you the truth, it's Jesus speaking. It is for your good that I'm going away. 
unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of guilt. And Jesus goes on to say, and when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Verse 13. So this is now the second or third time that Jesus has referred to the Holy Spirit as the one who is going to embody, the one who is going to consult, the one who is going to teach, the one who is going to bring us, remind us, teach us, show us the truth. But I, I want to put this whole reading in context because I think it has a lot to do with the timing of what we're going through in our society today. John chapter 16. This is the evening that Jesus is going to be arrested. He's going to be betrayed by Judas Iscariot. He's going to be arrested by a combination of, of chief priests and temple guards and Roman soldiers. The disciples, if they're up with Jesus in Gethsemane praying, they're going to fall asleep. By the time Jesus is arrested, they're all going to flee. Prior to this verse, if you go to earlier in chapter 16, Jesus says, all this I told you so that you will not go astray. He's telling the disciples, hours before he's going to be arrested, beat, scourged, crucified, everything I'm telling you is for the hard times in life. Everything that I'm telling you right now is for times like right now, but you don't know they're coming. I do. That's why I'm telling you now. It, I mean, if he, if he would say it again in a different way, it would be like, I want you to know in just a few hours this is going to happen, and I'm telling you things that you need to know in situations and times like this. When everything seems to be upside down, nothing seems to be happening right. God's not making any sense. And I'm sure some of us can probably be relating to what in the world, if there's a good God, what is going on around here? And why is our society crazy? And why, are, why is everything in an upheaval? And at the same time, I, I want to tell you that things are only out of control and only in an upheaval in the kingdom of this world. God's kingdom is never uncertain. God's kingdom is never out of control. God's kingdom is never in an upheaval. And so the closer we can be into his kingdom, the more stability and strength we will have. True for the time of this day, this Monday, Thursday evening, and the evening when he's going to be arrested and, and everything's going to happen on Good Friday, but also true in the middle of a pandemic where we're not sure who's right, who's wrong, what to believe. I'm going to send you a counselor. It's good that I go. Because I'm with you here physically, but, but the Holy Spirit's going to come and be able to be intimate with all of you, but all at the same time. And He's going to counsel you and guide you for times like this, when things are out of control, when things are not making any sense. I know this seems to be a bit of a, a downer uh, sermon, maybe, in some respect. We're weary of watching the news. We're weary of politicians telling us one thing and another one telling us another thing. We're weary of, 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 of people seemingly not being concerned that our economy is shut down. Not con Everybody has got, I mean, look at there's so much uncertainty. We all got an issue. So what do we do in troubled times? What does the church do? What do we as individuals do in troubled times? 
Jesus says, I'm going away, and when I go away, I'm going to send the counselor to you, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is only going to tell you the same kinds of things I told you because he's going to tell you things that come from the Father and me. We're one. So he's not going to say anything different. So when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, it's as if I'm speaking to you, Jesus is saying. And it's as if the Father is speaking to you because the Father and I are one and we're one with the Holy Spirit. And so it's all the same. So somewhere between Jesus' ascension into heaven after his death and resurrection, 40 days later he ascends into heaven, somewhere during those 40 days and the week after his ascension, they started learning how to tap into the Holy Spirit and understand the Holy Spirit within them and around them and amongst them as a body. So by the time that they're in the upper room praying, the Holy Spirit's going to come down and boom. They're going to know they got to move. And all of a sudden, the Spirit's going to gift them with abilities to teach and to preach and to heal. And they're going to begin to be Jesus. It's not like they had a committee meeting and they woke up and said, Hey, what do you think we should do? Hey, let's go out and speak in some other tongues and let's make sure that they boo. The Holy Spirit took over. Which is what Jesus promised. That you do not have to worry about that day and that hour when things are going to get difficult because my spirit will give you the words to speak, will tell you how you should act in those moments. In this one section in this reading, he says that, you know what, the spirit's going to convict this world. The spirit's going to hold this world accountable to sin and righteousness and its lack of righteousness. And judgment. That this kingdom of this world, the one we're living in, breathing in, the one that's upsetting us right now and getting us all worried and concerned, this kingdom doesn't win. This kingdom has no power. It has no solutions. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from our Heavenly Father, and He will provide us those perfect gifts, and those things. And yes, he'll even at times provide them in the kingdom of this world. He'll bring healing. He'll bring blessings. He'll bring provision. He'll bring a wisdom and a discernment. But we've got to be looking for it. If we're not looking for it or asking for it, then we miss it. We miss it. And I think sometimes we as Christians, if we get too wrapped up in the kingdom of this world, we miss the blessing that the Spirit of God wants to give us. In the kingdom of God. He's not only the spirit of truth, but he will guide you into all truth. One of the things that I think is really interesting, if you talk about definitions or, or defenses for the Trinity, Jesus says, I'm the truth. And then Jesus says, so is the spirit. That the spirit is truth. Because they're one. One essence this God we have, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus begins to tell them, uh, you see me now, but in a little while you're not going to see me, but then in a little while you're going to see me, and that really confuses them like crazy. Like, what are you talking about? In a little while we're not going to see you, and in a little while we're going to see you. But he's obviously talking about his death and resurrection. To you and I, he would be talking about his ascension and his return. For a little while you saw me, for a little while you're not going to see me, but then you're going to see me again. The disciples didn't understand. Clearly tells us in the scripture that they didn't get it at first. They didn't understand it at first. My fear is the Christian church could be so asleep that they don't see it either. And how devastating that would be. Because everything, every reason that we, the Christian church, the reason we exist is to prepare ourselves and bring a bunch of other people in and get ready for Jesus to return again. You realize that? Yes, God's going to give us provision. He's going to give us a job. We're going to have kids. We're going to have responsibilities. 
But none of that is supposed to be all that we live for. We live for the truths of his kingdom while we do those things. We fulfill our place in the body of Christ as we do those things. And the Spirit of God is going to guide us and direct us, remind us and teach us about truths in all the areas of our lives so that we might function properly as sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father and princes and princesses of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You notice that Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as a counselor several times in verses 14 through 16. And you can think of counselor in two different ways. There's the counselor that like you go visit because you're having trouble and the counselor helps you work through the trouble, the anxieties, the issues that you're wrestling with. The counselor will provide insight. There's also a legal counselor. One who's going to come to your defense. One who's going to be there to declare your innocence and, and, and to direct you in the right way to make sure that you're meeting the requirements of the law. And in both ways, the Holy Spirit is our counselor. I mean, Romans chapter 8 says that when I'm so anxious and so worried and like I can't even put my prayer thoughts into like sentences, that, that, that the Holy Spirit puts them into some kind of sentence that rolls up to heaven and God hears my prayers. And the Holy Spirit is interceding for me. And this prayers of groaning that come out of my even an inability to say the words, he does it. But at the same time, that same Holy Spirit will poke a finger in my chest and say, what are you doing that for, Tom? Stop acting like this. You need to repent of this, and you need to give this up, and you need to step into this faith. You need to step into this kingdom. You still have, a, you still have some roots over there in the wrong kingdom. Get those roots firmly rooted over here. And there's that Spirit pointing things out, pointing things out. I find it interesting that this reading, it ends with a verse that uh, we're pretty familiar with. This chapter ends at verse 33. Jesus says, I told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Just pause for a minute. Think for just a minute about anything that has you wigged out over the last week or two or three. Anything about this, this crazy world that we're living in. Whether it's that we're, people are lying to us and we're, we really don't know the truth. Um, is it about the fact that 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 it seems like that, that companies now can, can affect our freedom of speech and they can censor and take things off or put things on or is someone controlling the whole news cycle and they all tell us the same thing because someone's writing the words to, is, is the coronavirus something create? I mean, look, at, I'm not declaring anything to be a truth or a non-truth. I'm just talking about the things that are making everybody uneasy. In this world, you will have many troubles but take heart I have overcome the world brothers and sisters in Christ every time we have to nag it, nag it, na navigate in this kingdom we must do it with the wisdom of this one if we allow our human nature to get tied up in all of the stuff going on in this world, we're going to get, end up looking like everybody else, freaking out and going crazy and all worried and not sleeping and, 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 and having no peace because the world's going to hell in a handbasket. And they're, I've overcome the world. Do you think that the coronavirus situation... 
surprised God? I mean, do you think February, March, God said, oh man, I did not know this was going to happen. Do you think that at all, God doesn't know that there are people who could be lying to us? He has said from, from, from forever that the enemy is a murderer. He, he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. That he's come that, 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 that he might destroy us. If you look at everything going on from the kingdom of heaven's perspective, don't be surprised by what you're experiencing. This world is nuts. And sometimes it gets nuttier than normal. But always, Jesus has overcome the world. He's bore all humanity's sins. He's crushed the devil's head. He has picked up all our infirmities. He's carried our sorrows. That our Lord Jesus Christ sits enthroned as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And he is Lord of a kingdom that eternally is unshakable. That the gates of hell can't stand against. That nothing can stand against the movement of his kingdom. And so what I want you to be aware of, listen to me, if he was giving his disciples this word about the Holy Spirit hours before all hell was going to break loose, what did he want them to understand? That when all hell breaks loose, move towards this kingdom. Move towards God's kingdom. When all hell breaks loose, move this way. There is no value in moving this way because you're going to just get caught up in the storm. Move this way. Where David says, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, even if the whole earth should give way, even if mountains would start falling into the heart of the sea, I'm going to be here and be still and know that he's God. And all of a sudden, David can breathe again. And David can realize that although he's king, there is a king of kings. Although he's in charge of all these people, no, God's in charge of all these people. That all of a sudden, you, you, you have the assurance once again that the buck doesn't stop with us. It stops with the gracious Heavenly Father who has given us His Holy Spirit so that we might tap into that Spirit in times of tough times and have our sights fixed, have our mind fixed, have our, all of our emotions, everything fixed, so that we might have peace. I've told you these things so that you might have peace. I think I would like to end with this kind of thought. You might be sitting in your couch or chair or wherever saying, Pastor Tom, you are absolutely crazy. How can anybody have peace? during this time. If I wake up and realize that I am not in control of the coronavirus, I'm not in charge of making it, stopping it, I'm, if I wake up and realize that this world that I live in is broken and twisted, but there is a kingdom that is eternally true and eternally sure. That all I have to do is connect to that Holy Spirit that God has given me in this kingdom. And I can have peace. I can have peace. It doesn't mean that people shouldn't be held accountable. We shouldn't have laws. Yes, 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 and yes. But as soon as we start, this starts overwhelming us, as soon as this starts taking us over, as soon as this starts drowning us, we're making a mistake. we got to get back over here and realize that we are protected by the love of God. We're protected by the shield. We're in a refuge and a strength. We've got nothing to fear. That we're more than conquerors. Paul says that, I am now convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, nor the present, nor the future, nor any power and heights or depths or anything in all of creation can separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus my Lord. Period. Do I want to go through the suffering? No. Can I have peace in the suffering? Yes. Yes. Because this ain't the end. Even if I should die, 
Only this world thinks that's an end. <laughs> to me, it's going home. Hear Jesus say, for this reason, I'm telling you these things so that you might have peace. In this world, you're going to have a lot of trouble. But take heart. I've overcome the world. Attach yourself to that Holy Spirit, that counselor who wants to talk to you and wants to assure you. Root yourself in the truths of that Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Firmly Rooted. Please join me in prayer. With a simple phrase, let there be, you created everything. Your spirit breathed life into every living creature. The stars in the sky are at your fingertips. The wind and the waves are yours to command. With all your power and wisdom, you never hesitate to bend your ear towards your children. Flawed and sinful, we turn our hearts to you as our one true hope. With the knowledge of your life and resurrection, we live confident that our salvation is assured, saved and redeemed by the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We lift up our praises and thanksgiving to you, Father, for all the blessings in our lives. Even while we are living under the threat of COVID-19, we know that you are the solution to our problem. There is no virus or threat that you cannot stop in its tracks. We pray for our leaders as they face all the challenges that come with leading in times like this. As we learn new things in this battle, may they proceed with caution, knowing that the time of, is of the essence and lives depend on their actions. Encourage them to work together, putting aside partisan ideals and agendas. Give them the wisdom to see how their efforts can make a difference. We pray for small businesses in our community and all over the country. They have been devastated financially by the loss of income. May they know the creator of the universe has heard their plight. Father, no group has given more or risked more than our medical professionals and first responders. They are our first line and our last line of defense. Protect them while they serve those who need it the most. Guard them from the virus. Give them peace of mind and hope for a better day. We pray for those in nursing homes, our most vulnerable during these times of pandemic. May we not forget those who are suffering from other illnesses, those who have other health issues such as cancer, heart problems, diabetes, depression. The list goes on and on. We all know someone we love who is struggling with one of these or other illnesses. Our hearts reach out to you for an answer to our pleas. We look to your healing hand in hopes of a promising future. Prayers for the lonely. May we understand who it is that needs community and be there to ease their pain. All these petitions we bring to the foot of the cross. We lay them there and look to you for answers. May we represent you to the world with love and honor, filling the voids where love is lacking, pouring hope into empty glasses, and living our lives as people worthy of the sacrifice of Jesus. In closing, may we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, everyone, uh, just as significant of being God's word is the Lord's Supper, baptism. We call them the means of grace, means, 
means by which God brings His grace to us. He brings us His grace through His Word. He brings us His grace through baptism. He brings us His grace through the sacraments of the Lord's Supper. These are the means of grace. Why? Because He's a graceful God, and He's bringing us that grace at all times. On the second and the fourth Sundays of every month, we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Paul tells us that we should be introspective, that we should be prepared, that we should spiritually be ready to receive the Lord's Supper, that we don't take it just whimsically, but we take it with preparation. So I am going to invite you to now join me in a confessional prayer as we write our hearts because truly a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. So Heavenly Father, we've been worshiping you and we pray Father that you would speak to our hearts and you have and maybe you've shown us places in our lives that we need to let go of some things. Or maybe we're, we're, we're too conformed to the patterns of this world and we need to be transformed by your Holy Spirit. We, we want to repent. We want to repent of those areas that you're revealing in us even today that we got to let go of and leave at the cross. And grab onto and be and be drenched with the blood of Jesus that washes our sins away. And we want to come to the Lord's table, the Lord's supper, with a heart that is ready to receive. And so, Father, with that, we're going to take a moment of silent reflection. All right, everybody, it's time. I'm going to invite my dear bride up. <clears throat> Hi, honey. Hi. So I hope, like we're doing in our house, um, maybe you're doing a little less formally, uh, like not in front of lights and cameras. Um, Jesus, on the very night in which he was betrayed, took bread. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. In the same manner also he took the cup. When they had supped and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the new testament in my blood, which is shed for the forgiveness of sins. This do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And now may this body and blood keep and strengthen us in the one true faith to life everlasting. Listen, our sins are forgiven so we can be at peace. Oh 
only thing that ever really makes me want to change I don't want to abuse your grace God, I need it every day It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change I don't want to abuse your grace God, I need it every day it's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Your forgiveness is like a sweet, sweet honey on my lips. It's like the sound of a symphony to my ears. It's like holy water on my skin. It's like holy worship service. I just love our time together and I love the way that we're doing it now even though it's different than what we've done in the past. It's beautiful in its own way. So I just pray that you have a great day today however you're celebrating or not um, for Mother's Day and um, I just pray that you have a great week ahead. Don't forget if you haven't already taken the time to do it please like the Firmly Rooted Oxford Facebook page as well as become a subscriber on our YouTube channel. It just helps that word get dispersed to more people. And there's so many people that need a word of hope right now. Um, so please do that. If we don't have your information to keep you up, on, up to date on things, please send us your email and your name to the number right down here. And that just gets you in our database so that we can keep you up to date with things. All right, blessings on your day. Have a firmly rooted week.